do sign autographs and uh, answer any of your questions. Uh, please don't get personal with any of us so that... Uh, But they'll be here in a few minutes. Uh, they'll be glad to sign autographs, answer any questions, and uh, I hope all of you get a chance to meet them. We'll try to bring them around to everybody. It'll last one hour, one hour sharp, and then there's a... Uh, does not happen overnight. When we conceived the idea of the Connecticut Sports Foundation approximately 20 years ago, uh, it took a team. We really can't forget the guy who's really responsible for all of us being here tonight, Johnny Ellis. I think the Red Sox really helped himself, John, with the uh, acquisition of uh, Smith from uh, the Cubs. Uh, but I don't think that uh, a relief pitcher is any better than Rigetti in, in the bullpen when you're down six runs going in right inning. A personal favorite story of some uh, relationship that they had with uh, Casey. Well, it's not a relationship. We love, we all love Casey. And he loved us. Uh, he'd have a meeting in the dressing room, and he would chew us out so bad, the three of us. And that, that was to impress the older players on the team that we weren't getting away with anything. But then if we were walking out of a meeting, he'd wink at us. But we know he really liked us. But my favorite uh, Casey story, it's not, it's not only Casey, it's a little bit of Yogi. But uh, in 1959, I was pitching in the Yankee Stadium, and uh, they played the national anthem, and I took my uh, eight warm-up pitches. And the first batter up was Nellie Fox. And Nellie, the first pitch I threw, hit a double over third base. Louis Aparicio got up. And the second pitch I threw, he bunted down third. And I threw him two pitches. It's first and third. Uh, Manny Minoso was the next hitter. And I threw him a hell of a curveball, but it hit him in the kneecap. So <laughs> I've thrown three pitches, and the bases are loaded. And uh, Ted Klazuski, not many people remember, but Ted Klazuski played with the White Sox in 59. First pitch I throw to him, a high fastball off the right center field wall. Three run score, a man on second. I've thrown four pitches, and we're behind three nothing. Casey comes out to the mound, and Yogi doesn't want to miss anything, so he comes out there. And Casey says to Yogi, uh, does Ford have anything tonight? And Casey, Yogi says, how the hell do I know, Casey? I haven't caught a pitch yet. <laughs> You hear this talk about Steve Lee's, you know, like you can't understand what he's saying. 
But when he gets you in the office and he's mad, you know what he's saying, you know? <laughs> so this one time he gets us all three in there and he goes, look, he said, do you guys remember um, King Tut, or who was that guy? Who was the guy that lived a thousand years? Uh, King Tut. King somebody. <laughs> anyway, he had, he had like a thousand wives, too. And he said, uh, now if you got a thousand wives, you know they can't all be with you. They're going to be scattered around town. So he said, uh, he had this guy, he lived to be a thousand years old, he said he had this guy, uh, when he wanted a wife that was way across town, he'd send this guy to go get her, like two or three o'clock in the morning. So this guy had to run over and get her and bring her back. And he said, uh, you know, he said, this guy, this king lived to be a thousand years old, or a hundred years old. He said, you know that, that other guy? He said, yeah, the guy's running to get him, yeah. He said, yeah, he said, he died when he's 38. <laughs> he said, it's not the girls that kills you, it's that running after you. <laughs> In other words, he was telling us to get home earlier. <laughs> Rick and me, last gonna go over Mickey, and the splitter go in my eye. He used to get really mad at me, and so one day, I played second base, the old man bleeding defense, and I made a two errors out there. I only made about eight that year. And so he benches me the next day. And you know, I don't tell you, you just look at the lineup card and you're not in the lineup. So I take my glove. I always sat next to him because I wanted to hear him talk. And I take the, my glove and I go clear down to the end of the bench. Now you can yell at Casey and he'd yell back at you, but the next day was forgiven. You know, you can carry a doghouse around with him. So they're all waiting for the Dutchman to come down and talk to the big nose day going, we're going to find out what's going on between the two of us. And they're waiting for me to yell at him. And here comes Casey in the seventh inning going to put me out of second base, and I'm ready to yell at him, boy, and I know he's going to say something smart, Alec, and he comes down, and here's what came out of his mouth. And I used to, you know, I was popping, actually, he says, is Widow Bill we mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> so, would you take your Widow Bill and go out to second base? <laughs> Venus the say I just ran out and didn't say a word, but I was really primed to call him a duck son. That's my favorite case. I pitched opening day in... Detroit, and it was it was cold, but we just go back a month or so. In spring training, I had made up a concoction. I have small hands, and I couldn't get a grip on the ball in cold weather. So I made this concoction of, listen to this, baby oil, turpentine, and rosin. And I kept mixing it and mixing it. And I got this stuff, it was like Elmer's glue before I got through it. And I said, now how am I going to get this on my fingers and the glove during the game? So I was in the drugstore and I got this band roll on, you know, the menu under on the order. So I took the ball out and I poured all that stuff out and I put my sticky stuff in there and it worked perfect. I'd rub it on my fingers, on the glove, and uh, I said, this is great. And so I put it away and the only one on the club that knew it was Mickey because, you know, we were ruined together. So that opening day, now it's opening day, I'm pitching against Frank Larry in Detroit and it's actually snowing. But it, was, it wasn't sticky, it was like 35 degrees, really cold. I said, perfect, I'm going to try that, my sticky stuff. We go, I go out, and every inning I put it on my fingers, my glove. We win 5-1, to one. Uh, most amazing, I pitched 9 innings without using Louis Arroyo once. Mickey hit a home run, Yogi didn't do nothing, he went 0-4 for 4 and just caught the game. You got a picture, our locker in Detroit, this is in Detroit, is Yogi's here, I'm in the center, and Mickey's here. I don't know it, but Mickey takes the band roll on out of my jacket and he puts it up in my locker and pushes it way to the right. And in those days, we had about seven writers from the New York and four or five from Detroit. And they're all around our dressing room, talking, I mean, around our locker, talking to Mickey about his home run, me pitching the nine innings. And, and I don't know it, but Yogi, he hadn't done nothing, like I said, 0 for 4. He went in the shower, he comes back, dries himself, puts all his clothes on except his shirt. And Yogi was very cheap and wouldn't buy, you know, toothpaste or half the shave. And he looks up in my locker and sees the young dog on the door. This is, this is a true story. And he grabs the... And I'm still talking to the writers, and he's rolling on the floor laughing. And Yogi's giving us this under the car. And now he puts his arms down, and Yogi's very hairy. And that gets his arms down. Back in the shower, the trainer, the trainer, uh, no stories, had to get this, but Gus Mouth had to get the scissors. <laughs>